Good evening, Chicago, and welcome back to The Table on Air, your primary source for learning about what's new, what's happening, and what's what in black LGBTQ culture. You should know by now, but if not, I'm your host, Darius Caffey, and I thank you for showing up to this space. We're about to get real real, a little deep, and maybe a little teary, but we're going to have some fun, so stick around for the ride. For the main event this week, we're joined by a Grammy Award-winning songwriter from the city, y'all. But first, let's dive into the latest and greatest in this week's Black Report. Good people, good people. Let me tell y'all about what's been going on. Life has been life and child, and it ain't no better way to say it. Something is happening in the universe, I swear. And some of it I'm here for. But other parts I'm like, wait, what happened? Do I need to go hide? It's getting real crazy out here with them talking about aliens and government shutdowns, but somebody needs to let them people know that ain't nobody got time for that. I'm just trying to mind the business that pays me and wait for Joe Biden to cancel these student loans, okay? I know y'all hear me. But for real, life really has been taking me on a roller coaster ride this season, so I'm glad that this month is finally coming to an end. It's been a lot happening, some crazy per usual, but a lot of good as well. For example, the news of LaFonza Butler's historic achievement has just unlocked a new chapter in our national story. Her journey to becoming the first openly black lesbian to serve in the U.S. Congress is an extraordinary reminder that rejection, adversity, and challenges can oftentimes lead to groundbreaking success. And I say this from lived experience. We all face rejection at some point in our lives, whether it's a job application, a dream opportunity, a grant, or something as simple as a date. It stings, it hurts, it can be disheartening, and it oftentimes leaves us questioning our worth. But family, rejection is not a dead end. It's a pivot point. It's a chance to pause, reflect, and redirect our energy towards the right path that was meant for us. LaFonza Butler's inspiring journey serves as a testament to the incredible potential hidden within each no we encounter and every yes that we're blessed with. Because remember, Somebody out there is rooting for us, and they want to see us win. That's a wrap on our Black Report with the QUE. And until next week, keep finding ways to celebrate yourself. Joining us for a Halloween special at the table for this week's main event segment is Chicago native, local legend, talented musician, and Grammy award-winning songwriter, Just Logan. Hi. Welcome to the table. Thank you for having me. So I'm going to jump right into it because I know the people are probably wondering who is just Logan and why are they at the table? <laughs> what do they bring to the table? So we're going to let the folks know. I am the table. No, just oh, Okay. <laughs> you better claim it. You are the table. Yeah. So just to kind of get to know you a little bit more, can you share a little bit about your history and connection to Chicago? Um, yeah, I am a Chicago native. Um, grew up on the south side of Chicago, Inglewood. Come on, south side. That's what we do. Um, grew up in a musical family. Everybody, everybody sings and does some type of musical something. Everybody? Everybody. It is when you like, say everybody. Everybody. It's like, like a battle. Mama, cousin, grandma, my, sister. Everybody on my daddy's side. Okay. My mama's gonna slap me. She can't sing to save her life. She the dancer. I got okay. all my dancing from her. My daddy's Talent. side of the family, everybody sings. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's pretty intense at That's family crazy. functions. Like I bet. It's giving, sit around the piano and sing your life away. Okay, lots of karaoke. It's definitely, we take karaoke very seriously <laughs> in my family. It's not like, a game. It's not a game. All right. I know not to show up. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yeah. So that's pretty much me, you know, grew up on South Side, high school, everything, Curie, um, been in music my whole entire life. And it kind of just one morning talked to my friend and she was like, what are you doing with your life? You know, what do you want to do? I'm like, I want to be an artist. She's like, I don't see no music nowhere. I said, you're right. So you I got to fire. it. 2014 is when I started and I've been running ever since. Okay. Yeah. Almost 10 years. Almost 10 years. Wow. How does that almost feel 10. to be almost 10 years in the game? It feels, it feels I feel blessed. Yeah. I feel blessed. I feel like I'm growing. Every time I turn around, I'm growing into some type of new, evolved version of myself, whether that's spiritually, emotionally, mm -hmm. um, artistic-wise. I'm just thankful to still be doing what I love to do. Mm, and I'm thankful that you get to continue to do it. And it, it, it's bringing you, hopefully, a lot of happiness. It is. Yeah. It is. I'm ready for it to bring me a lot of... We claiming that and we Amen. speaking it at the table. We yes, merching that right, right now. Yeah. So as a... 
seasoned artist okay. in the game, doing the things that you're doing as a songwriter, because I know that's a big part of your artistry. Where do you pull some of that inspiration from? Writing comes, it comes from so many different places. Sometimes it's my own personal story. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'm still in the story from my friends or somebody that I randomly heard talking in the store like, oh, what happened to you, girl? Mm -hmm. oh, let me write that down. <laughs> um, I've had the privilege of, uh, I was a celebrity assistant for eight years. So I had the privilege of being in some amazing grooms. Mm -hmm. And this one songwriter, I cannot remember which one said it, so I don't want to misquote, but he had told me that everything is a lyric. Mm. And I took that with me, like every conversation, some things just speak to you yeah. and I just write it down. Sometimes it's just a sentence. And then two years later, it manifests into a full song. Yeah. Sometimes the whole song comes out in five minutes. So it kind of like varies depending on, depending on the day, depending on the mood, depending on where I'm at in life. Who are your top artists that you feel inspire you the most? Tina Turner, number okay. one. Oh, that's so, my girl, that's my, girl. <laughs> my heart. heart. Um, my family tree. I have a musical family tree. Okay. So I have um, Tina Turner and Little Richard are my grandparents. Mm, and then icons. I have uh, legends, right? Just yeah. amazing. Um, and then Prince and Naomi Campbell are my parents. Uh, Rihanna is a sibling. Okay. I have Uncle Andre 3000 okay. and my Auntie Grace Jones. Okay. Um, those are like my musical influences. Gotcha. I feel like I pull for them for multiple different reasons. Mm -hmm. All of them, what they all have in common to me and what resonates with me is that they're free. Like they're authentically themselves. Um, they are unapologetically themselves. And that's how I strive to live my life is just always be myself regardless of what room I go into, mm -hmm. just show my soul. I think that you're doing a great job of doing that, you know, Thank carving you. your own lane and making your audience know who you are as an artist and as a person and what individuality looks like for you. So I wonder what are you bringing differently to the table that you don't see in your counterparts? Um, well, I would say that I always crack a joke. I watched um, the Purple Rain movie mm -hmm. and they were booing Prince like in the beginning part of his career, booing him off stage. Yeah. And it just reminds me of myself because it's like when I get booked, especially get booked for shows in Chicago, there is a uh, more R&B, more trap. Mm -hmm. That That is really what like all the shows are built up of. And then yeah. you have me coming on stage talking about something <laughs> with my guitar and flinging my hair all around and stuff like That's that. That's what and we it's need like to a, see though, more you know, black rock artists. Listen, let's bring it on. Let's do it. Um, so it's like for me, that always, in the beginning of my career, it made me uncomfortable because I felt like that I wasn't really finding my audience, the people that like appreciated mm -hmm. what I do or understood what I did. Mm -hmm. um, but the more I keep doing it, the more I realize that I'm gonna make you my audience. Yeah. You know, I'm gonna introduce you to something different. Yeah, I may be the different person on the bill, but you're gonna leave and be like, what the hell was mm -hmm. that? Can I say hell on here? I've already said it we at here. this point. Okay, <laughs> we've already done it. You know, like, what is that? You know, so I feel like I'm an experience. I feel like that. Um, I am different because there aren't a lot of, like you said, a lot of um, black queer uh, rock and roll artists and rock and roll is kind of something that is not very mainstream right. right now in the industry. So there really is no space right now. Mm -hmm. So I'm just gonna have to kind of carve my way through it and make my own space. So yeah. that's, that's my goal, that's what I'm doing. So who are your, if you know, your black queer rock artists that you've paid attention to, listened to previously? Black queer rock artists. <laughs> That's funny because it's people that I don't know if they're queer or not, so I don't want to say nobody. Not. I feel that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I don't that. know. Mm -hmm. People be like, I don't identify as that. Well, Willow's so, one. I love Willow. Love Willow. I love now. Willow. I, I definitely want to collab with Willow. That's mm -hmm. a collab of okay. mine I want to do. We speaking um, Miley Cyrus. I would love to collab with her because she seems like she's a good time on stage. Yeah. Um, I'll leave it at that because I don't know who mm -hmm. else is queer and who identifies as queer to be 100% honest. So yeah. I don't want to offend nobody. But yeah, Willow Smith, that's my girl. She just, she be doing her own thing. She, she does do. not care. She really does. And I think that that's the beauty of, you know, black musicians, black queer musicians in general, but especially for black queer rock artists that mm -hmm. are you know, going into that lane that people historically have pushed us out of and that we don't have a lot of representation in, but we're killing it. You know, killing. you all are killing the, the game and really changing the landscape of what these lyrics mean for the audience and for the, you know, guests, the entertainers that are performing to it, the shows that you're going to is all not necessarily new, but it's a breath of fresh air, yeah. I would say, to for somebody who, like me, enjoys a good rock album like Willow and Miley and yours. So very glad that that's continuing that you're continuing to find more ways to lean into your lane and find more inspiration in it yeah for sure yeah yeah it's been a journey but we here we here we here and we're gonna keep going up <laughs> okay there's nowhere else to go there's nowhere else to go but up <laughs>
I want to congratulate you on the different things that you've been able to accomplish, the awards that you've been able to receive, and all the greatness that has come along with that. And, you know, even just the journey, because I know that the awards are one thing, mm -hmm. but the journey is really the the learning, the beautiful part of all of it that you get the most from. But I want to spend a little bit of time on those awards. So can you tell me a little bit more about your accomplishments so we can give you your flowers while you're here and celebrate you? I can. Yeah, um, so right before, well, yeah, right before COVID, around that time, um, actually a little right after COVID, well, the first year of COVID, because mm -hmm. um, we still- I was about to say, the water still. where we at right now? Shaking. <laughs> um, but I had quit my job. I was a, a celebrity assistant for eight years. Um, I quit that to try to focus on my own stuff. Mm -hmm. And I was really uncertain about like what, you know, I was supposed to be doing. I prayed about it, cried about it. And God was like, it's now yeah. or never. And I was like, okay. And I was scared out of my mind. Um, I ended up um, meeting up with um, this guy named Verse, who's a Chicago um, rapper. And he was like, yo, come to the studio, you know, let's write some stuff. And I was just, you know, in the studio, just writing, you know, doing what I do. And then the whole world just kind of shut down mm -hmm. again. So it was kind of like, okay, well, we're not doing nothing. What are we doing? And two years later, you know, he hit me up like, hey, yo, guess what? I'm like, what? He was like, so, he's like, you know the song we did? I'm like, yeah, he was like, um, you know, J.I.B. wants it on this project. I said, oh, dope. He's like, bad news though, we taking you off the song. And I was mm. like, dang, okay. okay. You know, yeah. he's like, good news is John Legend gonna sing it. I was like, he gonna sing what I, what I wrote? He gonna sing like my, my, my lyrics and my <laughs> arrangement? He's like, yeah, so that happened. And yeah. then I get a call like, oh, by the way, the project's being nominated for a Grammy. And I was just like, amazing. Okay, and it, what? Was like, oh, it won a Grammy. I was like, oh, okay, I hear you, Lord. You know, okay, I, 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 I hear you. I, if I you are you. ever stepping into your purpose, now is the Man, time. It felt, it was like really honestly confirmation for me, mm -hmm. and I needed it um, because as an entrepreneur, like everything is on us. Like everything mm -hmm. that we do, how I eat, everything is on, on my back at this point. I left my safety net. So it just was, you know, not only was it an award, it was rewarding to just feel like that something that I produced was yeah. worthy of some type of recognition from something of that stature. Yeah. So, yeah. I will say, John Legend is one of my favorite artists. Dope, Probably yes, for sure. top two, like Usher John Legend. Mm -hmm. But that experience, wow. Like, I'm sure that that probably blew your wig off. <laughs> my wig is still on the floor. Oh. Like, <laughs> like, you know, I mean, I'm still my lace and I'm yeah. holding it down for dear life. Yeah. Like, it's... It is something that every time I think about, my best friend is keen for reminding me of stuff like this. Like, you did this, and you did this mm -hmm. when I'm on the flow. Like, well, what, what's next? She's like, but yeah. you already did this, yeah. and you did this. So it's like, you know, it's definitely reassuring. Um, it still is something that I just cannot fathom because, mm -hmm. you know, we all have these expectations of our life, and we all, you know, have these things that we manifest and speak into our lives, but to actually have them come to pass yeah. is something, it's a totally different feeling. It's like, oh. Yeah. This is happening. And it happened. And it happened. It's done. It's done. You did it. I did. Congrats. Thank you. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> and cheers to many more. Cheers to many more, because I'm coming for my next couple of Grammys. I'm okay. trying to be up there like Beyonce, like. Oh. <laughs> Juggling. Can't hold them all because I got too many. I'm fumbling them. Yeah. 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 No, I love that. I really do. And I'm glad that you got to experience that moment, because not a lot of us get that moment to shine and be celebrated for our talents, you know, yeah. which is what that was. You contributing to a great project that won an award, but you get to shine because of your talent, because yeah. of your voice, whether that was you actually on the track or writing it, you deserve that that Thank moment to, to be celebrated. Thank you, I yeah. appreciate that. Of course, that's why we're here, Listen. celebrate our people, celebrate. okay? To do the things and Let's tell them. Celebrate. And as we're celebrating, I know it's also very difficult to do some of these things, so I'm wondering what have been some of those barriers in your creative process when it has come to using more of your talent and ability in the business? Because mm -hmm. I know the business can go up and it can go down. So I'm wondering what has some of those roadblocks look like for you? So for me, um, because I've, I've been around the industry for so long, mm -hmm. just not as myself per se, um, as a plus one, mm -hmm. I know a lot of the ins and outs of it. So like coming up in my own artistry, it's a little difficult because you like yeah. your face with things like, I know how this works, mm -hmm. but you don't want to come off. Like I never want to come off like, or who he think he is, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Or like, cause I'm just getting started essentially to the rest of the world. Um, so I feel like a lot of my roadblocks are trying to find a way to make sure that I am assertive and make sure that I get what I deserve without coming off very arrogant or entitled mm -hmm. to certain things. Yeah. That's a big roadblock. And then getting into these spaces that 
like you said before, I'm kind of pushed out of. As a black rock and roll artist, mm -hmm. there are certain places in Chicago that be like, you ain't performing right. here. You know what if I'm saying? It's not trap, it's not drill, or a little sexy R&B. You're not here. Where you going to Chicago? Where you going to go? So it's like, you know, I want, I really want to make Chicago, continue to make Chicago my home mm -hmm. and trying to find my footing here. Because I hate that everybody feels like they have to leave in order to do something. I really Sorry. don't want to leave. Like, yeah. I want to be here. Love the city. I love it here. Damn. I really love it here. My family's here. Everybody's here. It feels good to be here. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to find a way to ground myself here where I can get the city behind me and, like, you know, not have to leave. Yeah. And then come back and be like, yeah, I'm a Chicago native. Like, yeah. I want to let's have, make it happen here. Let's do it. Let's do it here. Are y'all listening? Is ya? Let's do it. Is ya listening? Why are, have we not already created these spaces for black rock and roll artists or marginalized, underrepresented people who are interested, you know, in the genre? Like, we need more spaces to enjoy. Yeah. To just live life and be free and have fun. I think that's what rock and roll is. It's, it is. It's a fun music. It's a freedom. It's something like, I mean, growing up singing, like, my family would critique you down to the bone, baby. Mm. I'd get off stage and my aunt be like, that was great, but did you hear when you cracked right there? <laughs> and I'm like, dang. <laughs> Nobody else heard that but Jenny. No. But like in rock and roll, it's fine to do that. You know what I'm saying? Like it's not so cookie cutter. It's not so note driven. It's emotional driven. Yeah. Like so, like if I'm screaming at the top of my lungs and it's not coming out right on key, it's like, ah, he was emotional. Mm -hmm. It's okay. You know. So I enjoy that part of like being able to get on stage and remove all of like the technical stuff that I've learned. Like I got it. I've studied music my whole yeah. entire life, so I can remove that from my head and just be free on stage and let whatever comes out comes out. Half of the time, I don't even remember what I do on stage. Mm. I get off stage and be like, show me a video, child, because I could have sounded a fool. I feel like <laughs> I've heard so many performers and entertainers that say that. Mm -hmm. They'd be like, when I go on stage, I just kind of black out. You have to. Do you? You have to. Really? Why you do you to. think that that's true or there's, that it helps your performance? There's so many things that can snatch you out of a moment. Mm -hmm. So, like, for me, like, I make sure my band is where we rehearsed. I make sure I'm where we rehearsed because if I know that, like, like, I'm the kind of person, like, if I was performing here today, I'd be like shaking the table like it's a table 30 because I don't know what I'm going to do. Yeah. I may just soon jump on the table and start dancing, but now this table then collapsed on me because yeah. I ain't tested nothing out. Mm -hmm. So it's like you have to like be so well rehearsed and be so like in the zone that you're not allowing anything to pull you out. Not allowing somebody you see in the audience to pull you out. Not allowing somebody. I had a show one time and this girl, <laughs> this girl was drunk in the front and she was knocked out sleep, sleep. during my whole entire set. And I was just like. I can't even look over here at you because I'm about to start laughing. And I, my ignorant self wanted to come over there like, wake up. Mm -hmm. But I can't do that. But it's like, you know, stuff like that can pull you out. Yeah. Or, but also you want to be present enough to be able to interact. So it's like, I try to be present like in between moments of songs and like my more vulnerable songs where it's not so high energy. It allows space for me to be able to like, if somebody yells out, you better sing. I'd be like, I'm trying to, if you mm. will let me do it. Mm. You know, like we can- I got this. I got this. We can interact a little bit more. Yeah. Cause I love shows that allow the audience to feel like they are a part of it. I don't want you to just come and watch me. I want you to experience this with me. It's an experience. Yeah. I'm feeding off of you. You're feeding off of me. I need y'all. Yeah. So. Yeah, I yeah. agree. I agree. But I definitely got to black out. Okay. Well, I mean, you're not the only one that's doing this. So yeah. it must be what you need to do to have a great show. Listen, close my eyes, baby. <laughs> and just let it flow. Just let it flow. Let the magic happen. It comes natural. Listen. Yeah. Well, thinking of that vulnerability in those spaces, I'm wondering what that means or feels like for you showing up as a black queer artist and how that has continuously shown up in your career, in your artistry, in your day-to-day -day endeavors. Um, Showing up as a black queer artist, showing up as a black queer person in general. Talk about it. To be honest, it's scary. Mm -hmm. Um, and I hate to use that word, but it really is like walking down the street as myself on a daily basis. I'm faced with so much craziness. Like mm -hmm. it varies. Sometimes it's like, yes, you look good. You better work. And sometimes it's what the, what is this? Da da da. People grabbing their kids and doing a lot of crazy stuff. And then even walking into musical spaces where you would feel like it would be more inviting because it's an expression. Right. It's still a lot of stares, a lot of people trying to process. And I get that. Like for a lot of people, me walking in as me is a culture shock. So I get that there is an adjustment period to be like, what am I process? What am I seeing? Who is this person? And then you have all the identity questions. Like, who are you? How do you identify, you know, et cetera. So it is an uncomfortable feeling to a certain degree, but I kind of have grown to 
have tunnel vision. Mm -hmm. Like my friends laugh at me because I will walk past you in a room and not realize that I walk past you just because my mind is like, I got to make it to the stage. Yeah. That's why I'm going. I'm not looking at who, looking at what, yeah. what eyesight I'm getting. Man of my business. Yeah, man of my business. The one so, that pays me. Yeah, when I'm outside, out and about, it's like, where am I going? That's yeah. my destination. That's kind of how I avoid the outside noise. But it's an uncomfortable thing sometimes, especially when you're just like, I'm just trying to be myself, y'all. Yeah. Like, I'm just trying to be me. And you shouldn't have to think about that one, just trying to live life and just be out on a day to day basis, but to go to a place where one, you're paid to be there. And two, this is essentially your space. Like yeah. you are coming to not control it, but as an artist, you control the room, you control the audience. So that stage becomes yours. So to go there and for people to make you feel uncomfortable, that's not right. Yeah. It's not something that we want to continue to see happening. So hopefully that as you continue to perform, continue to share your greatness with the world that you're able to find more spaces of comfortability that welcome you with open arms and celebrate you for the flyness that you're showing up as you. yeah there are there are some spaces mm -hmm. i don't want to make like all spaces in chicago yeah. like this because like you have like um so far sound right um, i do their platform a lot and they always are very welcome the audience is always Good. very welcome um next showcase chicago mm -hmm. they're amazing they do a lot of stuff and i always feel welcomed there um, but yeah, you know, some of these audience, you know, different venues and stuff like that. Sometimes, you know, you have to come in and be like, okay, this, mm -hmm. this type of night. Well, I'm going to do my show yeah. and that's going to be that. Yeah. So, you know, just come and present myself and, you know, whoever loves it, loves it. Whoever don't, that's on you. They want me to be there. <laughs> okay. And the ones that's there, they going to love it. They going to eat it right up. Listen. Eat it right up. Okay. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for sharing that with us. I think that that brings us so much insight into your artistry journey and how you've grown over the years. I think that that's one of the biggest things for me is just being able to see that growth in people and being able to celebrate them along you know, all stages of that, no matter where it's at in the beginning, in the middle, winning those Grammy Awards, okay. or even at the end, you know, when you're celebrating your life and the things that you've been able to do. So I thank you for coming here today to celebrate this with us, you know, all the things that you've been able to embark on, experience, and cultivate for other people. I think that even just as an artist, you're cultivating a lot of great spaces. So thank you for thank that. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. I appreciate that. No thank problem. You. We're going to take a quick break. Okay. We're going to be right back with a little quick game. It's going to be real this fun. Game. This real, game. Real fun. Right. Stick around Chicago after this short break and we'll bring you the vibes. I'm Hugo Alta, host of the podcast, Three Questions With. Mentors play an essential role by stepping up in their communities to support teens and helping them achieve personal, academic, and professional goals. Meeting the Moment is Big Brothers Big Sisters of Metropolitan Chicago. A mentor is not only just for them to guide them and give them that extra support, but to also help them in finding resources. Join us on Wednesdays at 7.30 in the evening via Channel 19, streaming on CanTV.org and the Can TV Plus app. And now for Open Space, an opportunity for us to let go, be free, and just live. Stick around for the vibes. So Logan, have a little bit of a game for you. Don't be nervous. I already am. <laughs> it's gonna be fun, quick, but more so just to get to know you a little bit better, give our viewers <laughs> a little bit more insight into who you are and where your greatness comes from. Okay. So to kick us off, I feel like you would enjoy this question. What's something in your closet that makes you feel the most cozy? <laughs> um, oh Lord. Um, I don't know. I'm so attached to all of my clothing. Okay. Um, the whole closet. The whole closet. Bring it all to me. <laughs> my clothes are all really consuming my life. Like mm. I need to move to a bigger space just because I have so many clothes. Okay. It's actually crazy. So I don't think there's one particular piece that I love more than the other. Oh my God, no, I'm lying. There is, a, I have this satin jumpsuit that I wear every time I have like a little off day. It's like, I can't remember where I got it from, but it's um, a four jumpsuit with satin, it's um, uh, gold. I love it so much. I, I love it. It makes me feel so good. It's okay. like, it's my rich auntie vibes. Yeah, it's yeah. giving it superpower. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Just like, I'm just going to the grocery store, y'all. <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> In this gold jumpsuit? In this gold jumpsuit, literally. <laughs> That is funny. <laughs> well, what's something in your closet that makes you feel confident, which might be this gold jumpsuit? Probably the same gold. <laughs> the same. To be honest, I love clothes. I also mm -hmm. just like, I don't know. I like to, 
I normally like to like show some type of my body because you know, mm-hmm. I work out a lot. So it's just like, I'd be like, the what less clothes, the better. Yeah. So I'd be like crop tops up to my neck. It'd be like a shirt. This all it be, <laughs> just a shirt. So a choker. A choker <laughs> with a collar okay. and that's it. And then some pants because okay. I have to. Fashion. Yeah, you know. Yeah, high yeah. fashion. High fashion. Yeah, yeah. High <laughs> fashion, I'm with you. <laughs> where, do you where do you feel the most comfortable? With my family. Mm. Um, I love being around my family. I'm very family oriented. So like anytime there's some type of holiday family gathering, we gather a lot. So I feel like just chill, relaxed, everybody chilling, cracking jokes, talking yeah. crap, favorite spades. Favorite family function? Favorite family function? Probably Christmas. Okay. I love giving gifts. Um, so it's like, I love to like see people like open stuff that I got them. Cause yeah. it's like, you like it? Uh, you do? <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about you when I got like okay. <laughs> you know the thought yeah the, the intention yeah. yeah I love giving gifts I love gifts so yeah Christmas is probably like and I get to see all of my family on Christmas because mm-hmm. I'm like bouncing like from house to house yeah. to house so yeah I would probably say Christmas okay Christmas is coming up it is Christmas is coming up and if y'all want to give me a gift just DM me <laughs> let us know <laughs> where do you feel the most confident <clears throat> um the most confident on stage mm. I do. I feel like it's mine. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like when I touch a stage, it's just like, here we go. Yeah. Like, let's do this. Like, so on stage, I feel very confident and in control. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Who makes you feel the most confident? <sighs> I would have to say, God makes me feel very confident. I um, really do. Like, I, I talk to him all the time, talking to him all day. Um, I feel like when I'm like uncertain about certain things, I'll take my time and pray. And that honestly just calms me and soothes me. So yeah, I would say God makes me feel the most confident because I am he is and he is mine. Amen to that. Yeah. I love to hear it. I'm glad that you have found spaces and people and entities to help you feel more comfortable and confident and loved and all the different things that you're doing. And I hope that you feel more of that as you continue to go on your journey and do more greatness and do all the things, you know, whether that's here in Chicago or internationally, because your presence deserves to be international. But I thank you again, Logan, for for being here with us, for sharing more of your light with our community, for diving deeper into who you are and what these connections mean to you and really giving our people something to hold on to as they look for more confidence in themselves and as they are trying new things in their lives, you know? Yeah, thank you. I appreciate being here. I appreciate this platform. It is needed. Yes, it is. So I'm glad that it exists and I'm glad that I can be a part of it. Well, we're glad to have you here. You're now part of our family. We so. are family, like a giant tree. Period. <laughs> As we end this night and this month on a good note, I encourage you all to take some time to think, to reflect, and begin claiming what you want in your life. Okay. We have a couple of months left in the year, so it's time for us to go after the things that we truly want. Our guest today showed us just how powerful claiming your future can be, so we hope that it left you with something to lean into and learn from. There's so much waiting for you on the other side of your journey, And the only thing left is for you to go get it. Make sure to follow us on social media at CanTV Chicago and Closet Unlocked to stay up to date on all the things happening. And you already know, we'll be back next week with more black queer folks being represented at the table. But until then, thanks for watching.